Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Iron Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, leaders from 19 African nations were in London for the opening of the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in the hope of capitalizing on membership of the group to boost economic growth. Also, a parliamentary debate in Senegal descends into a shoving match and hundreds of demonstrators clash with police ahead of a change to election law being unanimously passed in Parliament. And our team heads out to Cape Verde for the Atlantic Music Expo running in Praia. Our teams speak to Jupiter Bokonji, the Congolese lead singer of Jupiter and Aquas. But first, leaders from over a dozen African nations were in London on Thursday for the opening of the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. The Biennial Summit is, this time, taking on climate change as well as international development support, trade and investment. An attractive prospect for countries from the continent hoping to boost their economies and make the most of their membership of an organisation that some still call a relic from the past. Emeril Maxwell tells us more. Several leaders from the 19 African nations, still part of the Commonwealth, were welcomed in London by Theresa May as she sang the organisation's praises. The Commonwealth is a unique organisation and at this summit we have an opportunity to deliver lasting change that benefits all of our 2.4 billion people and I'm looking forward to working with you all as we move the Commonwealth towards our common future. The loose-knit club of 53 nations evolved out of the British Empire and is still headed by Queen Elizabeth II. Most of the countries share English as an official language and use a common legal system. It's probably best known for the Commonwealth Games, which are held once every four years, but its many objectives include economic development, the promotion of free trade and democracy building. It has in the past imposed sanctions and suspended members over human rights abuses. Apartheid era South Africa being one of the most high profile cases. It also suspended Zimbabwe in 2002 after observers criticized the country's elections, leading then President Robert Mugabe to withdraw from the group a year later. But critics say enforcement of human rights standards is patchy, and as the group needs a consensus to take any action, its declarations lack teeth. Supporters, though, say that it offers a platform for emerging economies to raise issues important to them. We are trolling are going to troll the whole world, right from Africa, Asia, Europe and the Americas, both North and South, to try and campaign for investments that will come to South Africa. And uh, coming here, participating in uh, the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting uh, is an added uh, boost for us. But some African nations have questioned whether they're getting much out of their membership. In 2013, Gambia's former leader, Yaya Jame, pulled his country out, calling the group an extension of colonialism. His successor later reversed that decision, and the country rejoined this year. Arguably, though, the future of the Commonwealth lies in developing trade ties. Bilateral trade between members costs about 19% less than global averages. And with Britain looking for new post-Brexit partners, remaining part of the club suddenly seems more interesting. That report by Emerald Maxwell. Now, Swaziland's kings officially renamed the country. King Maswati III is the continent's last absolute monarch. And on Thursday, he announced that he was changing the name of the nation to Eswatini. That means land of the Swazis in the local, local Swati language. The king says the country is switching back to the name originally used before it was colonized by the British. A parliamentary debate in Senegal descended into a shoving match on Thursday and hundreds of demonstrators clashed with police over a change to an election law. The bill was passed unanimously by Parliament after the opposition boycotted the vote. It requires all election candidates to collect the supporting signature of 1% of registered voters in each of Senegal's 14 regions, which effectively amounts to about 60,000 people. The ruling party says the change is to smooth electoral preparations by ruling out candidates with no chance of winning. Critics accuse President Macky Sall of trying to silence opponents ahead of next February's elections, in which he will be seeking a second term. 
The law now only needs Sal's signature to come into force. We don't understand what Macky Sal wants. We no longer say President Macky Sal. He's no longer the president of the Republic. The people must rise. Teachers are crying. The justice system isn't working. Nothing is working. We must fight. Well, Ethiopia's new prime minister reshuffled his cabinet on Thursday in a bid to move forward on promised reforms. Abiy Ahmed named 60 ministers, 10 of whom were new to the cabinet and said that he was responding to public demands for change. Ahmed told the new ministers to tra tackle graft and to streamline democracy. Ahmed took, off at, took office at the start of the month and is the first member of the Oromo ethnic group to lead the country. An arrest that broke out in the largest province of Oromia in 2015 was partly fueled by demonstrators' frustrations over their economic and political marginalization. The World Bank reckoned that growth in sub-Saharan Africa will hit around 3.1% this year. That's marginally slower than previously forecast, but a spike in commodity prices does mean that things have picked up since last year. The bank believes that by 2020, regional growth could hit 3.7%. Innovation has helped with poverty reduction, but the bank says governments do need to double down. African governments need to speed up macroeconomic and structural reforms to bring back growth to pre-crisis levels. In implementing structural reforms, it is fundamental to fully embrace innovation, to boost productivity across sectors, and more specifically, to increase access to electricity and boost agricultural productivity. Well, police in Nigeria have recovered a ceremonial mace stolen from parliament early in the week. They say it was found under a flyover in Abuja. Three men burst into the Senate floor on Wednesday and snatched the ornamental weapon. A suspended senator was blamed for orchestrating the theft. Decisions in the upper house cannot be approved without the staff, which symbolizes the authority of parliament. And finally, Iron Africa headed out to Cape Verde for the Atlantic Music Expo in Praia. It's the fifth edition of the festival, and musicians from across Africa and from both sides of the Atlantic meet ahead of the renowned Creole Jazz Festival. Well, our team spoke to Congolese creative Jupiter Bokonji, the lead singer of Jupiter and Aquas. Well, I'm going to leave you for Eye on Africa for now and let you join Jupiter with his music and advice for those looking for inspiration. Thanks for joining us. We draw on traditional music. We give it an international dimension by adding modern instruments such as guitar and drums. The album is called Kin Sonic. Kin Sonic has two meanings. It's the new sound of Kinshasa. The second part of the title is Sonic, these spaceships that travel at an incredible speed. That's what we aim for straight away, that beat to get everyone's attention. It took me almost 30 years of explaining, understanding, to search, to mix up the sauce, so that the blend of music is picked up by everyone. Today, if I do a concert in Kinshasa, whether it be the oldies, the moms, the kids, they all come and see me. But when I do a concert, it has to be outdoors so that it's free.